there are many, many things going on. I mean, we have different types of stimulation available. We have uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation with a magnetic coil that induces the current and then transports electrical current into the cortex. The advantage of TMS, magnetic stimulation, is that it's more focal. The disadvantage is it's a more complicated method. If you use that in modern labs, you use it preferably with neurostimulation. So you can basically project it pretty much exactly on the place in the cortex where you want it. And that is a completely different story from what we did with uh, DC stimulation. DC stimulation is very straightforward, simple with uh, small pads as electrodes that you can place more or less over the motor cortex and uh, reference electrode in front. So anyway, TMS would be a more focal method. And you could also induce other protocols like um, quick following of a quick series of stimuli, like theta burst stimulation is an interesting protocol. Or it's also possible to think about um, the brain more in terms of networks. That's what we are actually working now in the lab mostly to understand not only the, the regional differences in, in function after a stroke, but the network dysfunction. And it may be necessary to simulate more nodes of this network. So multifocal stimulation is the keyword here. And that is something that can be done with TMS, magnetic stimulation, but it can also be done with electrical stimulation. Um, because you can use some kind of like an EEG setup with montage and many electrodes, and then you can actually apply stimulation through those electrodes in certain combinations where you have an active electrode in the middle, some um, reference electrodes around it. So there are many different ways of addressing that. And there is next to the, uh, of the electrical stimulation um, techniques next to the direct current stimulation, um, now um, we use increasingly the um, AC, so alternating current stimulation, TAX also as an acronym, TACS. Um, and the idea there is that communication in the brain may happen to a large extent through oscillations, at least that oscillations can carry information or provide the readiness to perceive information in cortical areas. So coding by synchrony or information coding by oscillatory brain activity are the keywords here. And with TACS, you can actually apply oscillatory stimulation to those networks. So understanding that oscillations are so important for information con conduction, you can actually uh, think about using this code, these oscillations, apply it in certain points of a disrupted network and try to trigger network reorganization with that. So those are modern approaches that um, are being pursued in, in different labs across the world. And what is a little on the, say, on the low side is really multi-center trials. It's um, difficult because it goes across different sectors from the acute hospital into the rehab sector, sector, uh, sector or rehab hospitals. And um, the acute hospitals cannot easily keep the patients for two weeks anymore. And the rehab hospitals see the patients then later. So in the subacute phase, a few days after stroke, there is a transition of uh, healthcare in many countries which doesn't make it easier. But anyway, we have to attack this and we have to build larger international consortia that can effectively recruit patients for these kinds of interventions. I think there's still room for improvement. And from other diseases, like from Parkinson's disease with deep brain stimulation, we know that in principle, stimulation can have beneficial effects on the brain. It's a different story in Parkinson's disease and DBS, but still, in fact, it still shows that Electrical stimulation is powerful.